How's it, everybody? It's Masters Week, and uh, I'm amped, as I'm sure you are. Look, I got my Masters Flex hat on. My favorite. I know it's red. It's just something about it. I got to get it in the Augusta National Pro Shop, so it says Augusta National on it, which is special. I know I'm flexing a little bit, and I have my Masters coffee coffee cup, so um, we're good to go. I'm heading up to Augusta National later today. Will be part of the Amen Corner broadcast, which is always thrilling. I mean, it's the most iconic stretch of three holes in the game. Um, and to be alongside Grant Boone, who is just a professional, he's so good, and working for Ken Mack and Mike Arnold, producer and director. It's just, it's a thrilling, very spiritual time for me, We're being on that channel, calling a stretch of holes called Amen Corner. And um, look, it's, it's, it's unlike anything else. It's a tradition unlike any other, to borrow my friend Jim Nance's uh, praise. Um, to that, uh, the book, my on the mark book, uh, Lessons from the Best, is available for pre order right now. So if you go to back nine publishing.com slash Immelman, that's back nine number nine publishing.com, you can get your uh, pre order of this book, which to me is it was not only a labor of love, it was a great thrill. And to have something now start to come to fruition and see it before my eyes. If you've been watching social media, you would have seen uh, some of the teasers we did. And the cover has been released. It's got tinges of green in it because the Masters is so special to me. So um, look, it's loaded with insights and lessons from folks who have been on my podcast. So go and check it out. It is worth your while. Again, back9publishing.com slash Immelman. Um, but back to the masters, you know, every year we, we, we do what is a recap podcast on my on the mark podcast about lessons learned from the masters. And I was like, but wait a second, this is such a special place that, that why don't I get together with you guys and share just what I feel like are a few keys to playing the Augusta national golf club. Well, now I've been fortunate enough to play it multiple times. I've been fortunate enough, obviously, to be a small part of my brother Trevor's victory flag back in the corner there. And Larry Myers just above him um, wasn't around for Larry's victory, but uh, was there for many seasons when I was working with him. Um, so I understand the golf course and, and what's required. And so here's five things to watch for uh, skills, if you will, uh, mindsets, whatever it might be, to play the Augusta National Golf Club well. Now, look, these aren't the only five, but they sort of jump out to me because the golf course has so much nuance and there's, there's so much know-how to playing it well because it's so beautifully designed by Alistair McKenzie. Bob Jones, my hero, was just a legend, understood the game. And, and Undulation is such a great golf course defense. And if you've ever been to the Augusta National Golf Club, you'll know that Undulation is real. Humps, hollows, hills, mounds. Um, not much water on the golf course. It comes in in opportune times. I think of 11, some of my A-main corner holes, 11 and 12, 13 down the left, uh, of course, 15 and 16. But otherwise, no water, just hills, mounds, valleys, runoffs. And so it's awesome that way. So with that being said, here's five things to watch for. Keys, in my opinion, to playing the golf course well. First off, we'll go from the green out. Because obviously, uh, you can, if you course managing well, you build your plan from the green back to the tee, especially around the Augusta National because of angles that are required. So, on the green, look, it makes sense that you would hold out well from five and six feet because even if you hit a good putt, you're likely to have something of that sort of range to make. So, being good from short range is awesome. But I would add to that and saying that lag putting is a skill required around the Augusta National. And not just lag putting, the ability to really see the wide line. And that's because of the speeds of the greens, and certainly because of the slopes on the greens. And I would now make a lesson out of this and to say, as you watch these guys, watch how the ball, if it's missing, is likely always missing on the high side. So the ball has a chance to topple in, like great 
two-time Masters champion Ben Crenshaw used to do. I'll never forget him saying to me, he wants the ball to fall into the hole like a drunk sailor. No, a ball's never going to fall uphill, but it will fall downhill. So you'll see players looking at wide lines. They'll try and figure out the widest line with the speed they choose that they can take that still allows them to hold a putt. As I teach golf, I feel like one of the biggest mistakes I see amateurs make is going too straight. And so the ball gets low early. And as it gets low on fast greens, it's going to roll farther away. So take the wide line. Go and try it. If you miss, miss on the high side. I know it's trite, you know, miss on the pro side. But here at Augusta National this week, it is paramount. Because if you get one low on one of these slopes, you might have six, seven, eight, nine, ten feet for your next one. But if you miss it high, you'll always see the ball rolling in toward the hole. You'll see that with approach shots too. And that brings me to my next um thing required to play the golf course well and that is distance control with the irons because as the greens are set up there's a certain flow to all of them there certainly are areas where you don't miss a whole location so you'll see players at times if they don't have the perfect club playing to a safe zone a zone that makes that lag putt a little easier so with all of that contact and distance control to me is paramount to success so if you can hit the ball the right distance, you can attack certain hole locations. If you hit the ball the right distance on the right trajectory, you can play some defense if you need to, to certain hole locations. But I feel like a quality strike with an iron is really important to success around the Augusta National Golf Club. So when you're going to go and practice on your own game, at times, just work on the skill of good striking. Get yourself some foot spray and spray it on the club face and hit 10 shots and see how many times you hit the sweet spot of the golf club. If you don't do very well, don't stress. Practice a little while and then try it again the following day and just try and get 1% better. You know, if you can make one flush strike today and two tomorrow and maybe three a few days later and the next thing you'll be at seven out of 10. And then as you do that, as the strikes move better to the face, the distance control will improve and your miss hits will improve as well. Because if you're getting the dispersion and contact tighter, obviously the misses won't be as grand. I have my daughter Isabel use a golf club box that she puts outside of the golf ball. That's to iron out a little bit of a heel strike. So go and practice ball striking. You'll see the players do this. Because if you strike the ball well at Augusta National, you're going to control distance. You're going to flight the ball on the appropriate trajectory. And so as a result, you'll be able to play a little more offense to some of these hole locations. Then along those lines, point number three of five to play the Augusta National Golf Club well is the ability to play from uneven lies. Because like I said, undulation is a big part of this golf course. It's not just on the greens. I think of holes like 10, where you likely have a downhill lie to a green that's raised away from you. I think of 18, where you have an uphill lie to a green that's raised away from you. I think of the second, if you hit a long drive, you've got a severely downsloping lie. You've got three, which has got the ball above your feet. It doesn't matter where you are. S uh, seven, the ball's below your feet. Nine, the ball's below your feet and downhill most times. So you never really have an uneven lie. 13, it's way above your feet for the second shot. Nick Faldo on this, on this very podcast spoke of that second shot he hit against Greg Norman. So the ability to play from uneven lies is crucial. And then not just that, the ability to control spin off uneven lies is crucial. Jordan Spieth on this podcast spoke about how the uneven lies kind of spur creativity within it. Go listen to that podcast. It's worth your while. So I would say to you, golfer, when you go to the driving range, sure, work on the range, but then go and find yourself an uneven lie. And practice there. And if it's not good, 
keep practicing there. If you want to uh, improve your draw swing, practice with the ball above your feet. If you want to improve your, your fade swing, practice a ball below your feet. If you want to improve early extension in your swing, practice with the ball below your feet. If you want to launch the ball higher and improve your angle of attack for a driver, play on an upsloping lie. If you want to improve compression and contact, play on a slightly downsloping lie. Go and do that. I use uneven lies almost every day when I give lessons because they can just teach one so many things. But you don't get accidentally good off uneven lies. It comes from repetition and practice. And that is why the uh, practice tournament practice facility at the Augusta National is just incredible. If you watch the early coverage, watch around the practice pitching and chipping greens. There's not a level lie there, but you'll see the players from every area, green above, green below, ball above, ball below, you, you name it. They're practicing it all. Even those guys with names on their golf bags, competitors in the Masters, tournament participants. So practice those uneven lies. Then to that, this is point number four. Again, just quick five points to playing the club well. I feel like it's commitment. Now building away from the green, we talked about, you know, lag putting and then hitting the ball the right distance to the correct sector on the green. And then the commitment, because with the holes that weave in between these tall lobolali pines, there's always wind swirling around in there. And you'll see players on again, off again, in the routine, out of the routine, because the wind's flipping around and changing. So in the end, it takes real commitment. And that's difficult because doubt is a real part of the human psyche, right? So committing to shots in those swirling winds, committing to shots when one's nervous. And yes, they get nervous just like you do. It is, it to, could, to me can be the biggest helper or wrecker of a golf swing there is because in my estimations and experience tension wrecks golf swings because tension is the enemy of a free swing and if you uncommitted tension starts to become kind of the order of the day so whatever it is whether it's the correct or the incorrect club commit to it as gary player masters champion once said to me he goes hit every shot as if it's the last one you'll ever hit now think about that for a second. If you were hitting the last shot you were ever going to hit, would you make some wishy-washy, uncommitted swing? Would you care where the ball goes? Probably. But I would venture that you will likely just make a good free swing and you'll make it count. You'll balance that finish. You would have the correct club. You'd be completely committed. Because that's what it is. Whatever the winner shoots this week, let's call it 280 strokes, eight under par, maybe more, probably more. Um, it's a number of shots, and you want to be as committed as possible on all 280 of those. So when you go and play, search for commitment. Before you go, I would rather you be committed with the incorrect club in hand, give it a good pass, give it a committed swing, then be wishy-washy with the correct club in your hand. I've just come from a junior tournament and I regret to say that I saw a number of wishy-washy attempts. So commitment is crucial, especially in a major championship. I've been around players when they get to that first tee and they are nervous. And before the time on the warm-up facility, they will hit a few shots that are replicas of what they're hoping to hit off the first tee so they can be more commit committed. Give that a try. And then they'll hit a few shots around the greens. You know, they'll hit basically the shots they'll find on the first three holes. So they have an advanced notice of how they feel if they can do it. So they can be committed. And just one more thing to commitment. If you don't have the draw on the day, it would be useless for you to hope to try and hit the draw. You'd rather be committed to the fade and that's what the, the, the ones who succeed around the Augusta National are able to do. They're able to believe in themselves enough to say, well, I don't have the shot today, 
but I can hit another shot. I can be committed and I'm still good enough in doing that to be a part of the storyline on Sunday afternoon. So that's four. Lag putting, distance control, playing from uneven lies, being committed. And then the final one is just a course management strategy thing. Now you'll hear a lot of people say, well, the ability to move the ball from right to left is um, helpful around the Augusta National Golf Club. And I would say, yes, it is. A lot of the holes turn left. I think of two. I think of uh, five. I think of nine, 10, 13. Um, but I will say this. If you watch the golf course, all of the trouble is down the left-hand side. Off the first, you can miss it in the fairway bunker and be okay. Miss it in the trees on the left and you are in some tight quarters down there. If you miss it down the left of two, you have nothing. I mean, absolutely nothing. If you miss it down three, left, there are bunkers down there. If you miss it down five on the left, there are gigantic bunkers down there. You'd rather miss right. If you miss it down seven, the trees down there, the way they are fit into the place, make it almost impossible to get to the green, but a miss down the right gives you angles too. If you miss it down the ninth, you challenge the left-hand side, but if you miss it left, you've got nothing. If you miss it to the right, you've got a shot. Down 10, if you miss it left, you have nothing. If you miss it to the right, yeah, you can pull something off like a bubba. Down 11, it's sort of two-sided there. Down 13, left is bad. Right, we've seen eagles from the right-hand side in the trees. Down 14, left is bad. Down 15, left is bad. Down 18, left is really bad. I've seen golf courses lost in those holly bushes over there. So yes, the ability to turn the ball left is bad, but watch for the course management. The left shot is a dangerous shot at the Augusta National, the left miss. So watch how many balls you will see start to miss to the right off the tee. Yeah, the guys might be trying to move the ball from right to left, but if they miss, I guess the lesson for you is that if this is the center line, they're missing to the right. And if it's drawing, it's drawing to the center line. It's never crossing the line, if you know what I'm saying. Because that's dangerous. If you're trying to hit a fade and you're aiming left and the fade crosses the line, that's when it becomes weak, when it misses on the right. But if it's turning to the target line, that's when it's strong. So as you're practicing, set yourself a, an alignment stick down the way a little bit. And if you're working on a draw, try and turn it to the stick. Don't turn it across the line. That would be bad at Augusta National. If you're trying to hit a fade, start it left, turn it to the line. Don't miss it across because that's when that fade falls weakly short of the target. Left is bad at Augusta National Golf Club. And I find myself, I'm remiss at saying that because there's nothing bad at that golf course. It is heaven on earth. It truly is. And I'm so thankful to be a part of it. I'm so thankful to be a part of the Amen Corner Show. Come join us Thursday morning. We'll be on covering every golfer coming through that iconic stretch of holes. And I will be uh, tweeting and such from there. And uh, no pictures because you're not allowed uh, phones on the golf course naturally. Um, but, but I'm just looking forward to it. And I'm looking forward to interacting with you. So share this one with your friends, please. Uh, go follow me on social. I'm at Mark underscore Immelman. Um, go check this, uh, pass this on to your friends. It's on YouTube. And um, subscribe. Subscribe to me on YouTube and interact. I've loved the comments we've been getting there since we've been um, working on this YouTube channel a little bit more. So enjoy your Masters. It's thrilling. It's one of the best events, if not the best event of the year. For me, it certainly is. I love the Open Championship as well. Um, but it is a true rite of spring. And here in Georgia, we've had a late spring, um, but I found golf courses around here because we have a, a red clay base. The golf courses are really beginning to firm up now, despite some of the rain we've been getting. So it promises to be a really good one. And I cannot wait to be a part of telling its storyline. Not that I have to do much because the Masters tells its own story. Thanks for downloading. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for supporting. Thanks for supporting me. Thanks for following me. Thanks for following my podcast. You all are very, very special to me.
And if you're out there at a PGA Tour event and you see me walking the fairways, say how's it? I'd love to say how's it right back.